Hello beautiful beings. It's Thursday afternoon and I'm in the garden. I thought I'd come out and do the last seeds of the seeds of change which are self-confidence and self-love and just touch in and share you my garden. So in there I've got broccoli and cauliflower and uh, spinach and I've put the net up because the white cabbage moth is back and my snow peas and I've got cucumbers and the carrots are coming up and their beans no peas and then the strawberries are starting to flower and the sage the sage is just beautiful the lemon lemon balm Marjoram. I planted some corn. I don't know if it's the wind or something snibbling at the avocado tree. Oh, passion fruit and beetroots to come up. Parsley's a bit lush, isn't it? And that's tarragon there. That one there. And I put some zucchinis in. And there's garlic and something else and something else such a beautiful place so blessed to have a spot like this to come to and with the birds it's a beautiful oh. <laughs> beautiful time of the day hope you're all feeling well it's um, a full moon in Aries tomorrow night, I think it is. So for those with Aries in the chart, I'm Aries rising. So, well, that's nice with the light, isn't it? Aries rising. So I think I felt it a couple of days ago. Things seem to have found a harmony, which is what I was talking about before. It's harmonizing your, your energy. It's all you have to do. And how you do that do it healthily do it positively look at how you can harmonize yourself that makes you feel really good I think that helps <laughs> it helps immensely and that's a journey in itself learning those skills learning those tools of how to self-regulate what I like to term harmonize to me it's just got that a different energy behind it when you you're just learning to harmonize your own vibration, your own frequency. And then things can set right in your world. It's really quite powerful. And the the writings that I've written about um, are actually tools that I implement. They're, they're tools or teachings. I kind of like worked out to help myself because um, for some reason it's really important for me to have kind of like steps in place that's how I learn I'm just sitting on a an asparagus branch <laughs> I didn't want to squash it anymore so these these steps have really helped me um, in a lot of ways so that when I've gotten to this point in my life and understanding things through a different lens now with a with the diagnosis of level one autism it's so relieving in a way it answers so many questions and it's it's like I just feel like this big release and relief um, towards myself especially and more accepting and then wanting to share my quirks wanting to share um, whatever I can in whatever way shape or form that may help you in some way shape or form because I guess it's what it's all about at the end of the day is sharing so we're aware um, some of us live by experience so it's do it anyway that's the only way you learn but it's at least you can um, keep you on track or give you hope or just know there is relief there is release 
retrain the brain pretty much at the end of the day open your heart retrain the brain and we do that by learning we do that by research we live do that by our actions in the everyday mundane world our thoughts our attitude that's where the magic is it's really not rocket science but it's somehow trying to flip that brain flip that mindset and get comfortable with feeling uncomfortable while you shift through changing your habits and your thoughts and then you will get somewhere you do <laughs> and, and then it's um, you see the world through a different lens and I think it's really important that we we help each other become more tolerant we help each other become more inquisitive about other people who may trigger us or who they are their attitude and it is it's so cliched and it's so corny it's that saying is like we don't know what other people are going through we don't know what makes them tick or trip up we don't know what makes them triggered or hit brick walls I mean it's like a lot of the times we don't know it in ourselves so how the hell will we know it in somebody else and it's not until you <laughs> you butt up against it that you go oh here's something what are we going to do with this and it's like um, true speaking is what we want but we're not ready for it can be really confronting and we do it's like humanity have have such high expectations on one another even on ourselves and then we fall in the head and go yeah no I can't do that I think it's like let's harmonize again it's like let's not try those leaps and bounds and those big strides so let us just do baby steps it's just more that's the way I, I'm, I have been doing it, I think, all my life. I think at one stage you do do leaps and bounds and then you realise by choices and experiences, oh, no more leaps and bounds, let's do baby steps. <laughs> um, you may get to a point in life where you just go, yeah, just, just stop with the battering. Can we just do this slowly, softly, gently now? Life. And that's what leads me to all these writings is is working out how to be in this world um, when so much screams inside of you that we could be living very differently we could have completely different ways of communicating policies and procedures just completely different ways of living and viewing one another and how we are part of nature we are part of this planet we are part of the whole system and yet we're destroying it. We're destroying our own habitat. We're destroying each other. And I step back and I just think, where where does this come from? Because I find it mind-boggling. So learning to be in a world that's like that, where you don't it don't fit into that, what do you do? So <laughs> I guess you just got to learn other ways, and. And it's like, you know, again, that corny thing about being your own best friend. But it, it's, it's like that wise counsel on your shoulder that I wish I had growing up. But then, but then I wouldn't be who I am now sitting here with all that rich experience, with all that rich language and wisdom that you accumulate through your stories through the lived experience with the ground, with the earth, with one another. We have lost our ways. And so how do we how do we repair that? How do we remedy that? Because some people don't want that. It's we've got to remember the one thing that sets us apart is this free will and choice that we seem to have where the other animals, other mammals, are more instinctual. So it's our left thinking brain again. Now it's retarded because of concepts and constructs that we live by. The trauma, the pain, the abuse, the, the self-loathing, the, the diet, the water, the 
what you watch there's just so many things that have gone into conditioning modern man and that's where you see things could be just so different it's like what what happened to integrity or honor or truth transparency you know what happened to all of that and i know it's difficult even for you know, any human to live that so again, it's like me having the own pressure on myself. It's like this is what I come with in a world that seems to me quite the opposite, quite mad, really. Very perverse and, and corrupt. So that's just my view. So this is, this is me then coming to terms with, well, What's the truth then? What, why are humans here? Why are we here? What is this experience? Why do we go through these things when you look into things time and time again? What is that? Everything's cyclic. Everything's a pattern. It's a fractal. All connected, but mm, never, ever, ever, ever the same twice in any given moment and we get so stuck in these concepts and constructs in these small cities and these towns and these countries and these wars and these policies and procedures and things like that you just well, <laughs> really we can't expect too much from who's governing us because of how we govern ourselves. It's, you know, as above, so below, as within, so without. So the universe, so the soul. So that's where the teachings come in, that we realise, oh, wow, you know, we could experience life so differently. Why not? Be the change you wish to see in the world. And I thought, okay, um, that's what I'll do. I'll be the change I wish to see in the world. Not realising the rabbit holes you go down to honour that and then promising myself a long healthy happy life not realising rabbit holes that took me down just to honour my own promise well it just showed me you know in, in integrity and you, you get there in the end you do you get there in the end and you just do life because it's very fleeting so what are you afraid of what are you attached to Start letting go, start being a little freer, start putting down the baggage of thoughts, start putting down the baggage of expectations, start putting down all these concepts and constructs, just start putting it down. You can pick them up, but you give yourself a break every now and then, just put this, put it down. And then you start to realise, well, why am I carrying it with me? What's it actually doing for my life? And so you start to self-love. Then you start to go, well, how do you do that? And you start to self-reflect. That seeds into self-awareness. Self-awareness seeds into self-acceptance. This is can't, if you just follow the steps, you can't help but just flow into that. Then all of a sudden you get to self-respect. Because you're living by your values. You and it's, it's not instant. You've actually got to put it into practice. This is where the self-respect shifts it from the mental, the mental realm into the physical realm by your actions, by living by your values. Not thinking by them or attitude by them, but actually implementing them in your everyday life. What is it? Are you doing something in your life that support your values, that gives you purpose, gives you meaning? Because that's fulfilling. It's like you then be become part of something bigger and your world's not so small and closed in. You start to self-respect. So you've got to work at it. It's not something, it's not a light switch that you can switch on. It's not how the brain works. Especially with the body, it, the body's de like delayed reaction. The more you can program this towards self-respect, living by your values, by waking up in the morning what do you have for breakfast do you drink enough water do you feed the body the temple the nutrients trace elements vitamins and minerals that it actually needs to not just survive but maybe thrive what are you reading what are you watching 
What are you talking about? What, where's your, is your mind distracting you onto small things? You know, challenge it, challenge yourself. It's what we have to do is challenge ourselves because it, we know that left brain can talk us into things, out of things and around things and have us believing lies because we believe everything we think. And that's not the case. So we've got to challenge yourself. No, well, I guess this is the, the mirror. This is the reflection. This is your feedback loop as to what's your life like in your environment? What are your relationships like in the world? How are you living? How are you feeling about life? That's kind of like your mirror back to see if you are living by your values or if you know things are out of balance or something needs looking at. Because it's a great relationships and your environment, your lifestyle, your habits, they're really great mirrors if we take the time to look at them to see where we can improve things. Because, oh, free will and choice comes back to that. But we can choose. We don't have to wait for someone's approval or acknowledgement or whatever. We You choose it for yourself because you've gotten to this point where you need to choose it for yourself. You've got to do something different to get that result you're looking for and this is it. The steps and self-respect is living it in your everyday life and um, then that starts to build self-trust because you're making better choices because you're respecting yourself and that's when your boundaries come in is because okay if I choose to live by my values that maybe means I need to put boundaries in place and I need to maybe have some routines in place something like that so that you actually put time and energy and focus and love and care into certain aspects of your life that starts to build that self-trust and you start to put your boundaries in from a, a space of love not a, as a space of fear as a different energy expression when you do it that way then that leads to self-confidence because now you are trusting you, you're learning to put your boundaries in place you're learning who you are and you're learning what's really good for you because then that makes you feel better and when you feel better within yourself within your environment your home that changes your body. It, it has a kind of like a ripple effect out and it shifts your world but it's got to come from the inside out we're so used to living outside in from outside stimulus and it's that and the other it's like we've got to find ourselves again to harmonize ourselves so we can bring that out into the world and then you start to really trust yourself and get that confidence which is your self-esteem and your self-belief and that you are enough And it doesn't matter what anyone else believes about you because when you start to shift how you feel about yourself, that has that ripple effect out there in the world back. And there's a lot of humility in, in doing that. There's a lot of owning your own shadows and your own processes and your own victim mindset, which unfortunately does walk hand in hand with PTSD or complex PTSD. But when you start to shift and heal that story, that, that, and there could be multiple stories, I know. But when you start to heal that, it, your victim mindset starts to shift. It starts to let go. It starts to walk towards a different expression of maybe towards hope or you know, a, a different want for the future. But nobody can do it for us. And it, it's... Um, I don't want to say it's difficult work. It's It just takes the want to do it, the drive to do it, the perseverance to do it, the the awareness that it's it's going to be, it's going to bring up stuff for you to face, to reconcile with, however that reconciliation is for you, so you can put it to rest. So then you can let it go, put the baggage down, so then you can fill up that space that, that was taking up in you with something that is more in alignment with your true energy signature who you are your blueprint so that starts to build your self-confidence and of course that leads to self-love and you are allowed to be both a masterpiece and a work in progress simultaneously and when you think about that 
Yes, it is. Our divine blueprint, that, that pure essence at the core, is the masterpiece. It is a one-off, never to be repeated again. As we are, this is it. It's like, why aren't we making the most of it? Why are we not looking after this amazing, complex but simple but weird mm, um, body that I'm, I'm in? It's my responsibility to look after it. That took me a long time to embody and understand. <laughs> That's if you, when you choose if you want to be healthy. Naturally, you, you have to make different choices if you um, aren't in that space. So it has, you know, multiple tentacles across many aspects, these steps towards self-love. When you look at food, when you look at your lifestyle, when you look at your relationships, you know, all these kind of things have to do with self-love, how we treat ourselves and how sometimes we hide ourselves or we um, diminish ourselves or we twist ourselves inside out. Uh, it's it's not and really anyone's fault. It's just the lack of awareness and the lack of teachings, the lack of repair and remedy, just lack of communication, lack of, lack of education, lack of um, respect and tolerance. Yeah, it's, it's interesting time. So self love, self love is self-mastery and self-regard you've finally gotten to that point where you realize okay I mean I'm not perfect and I have my own issues and shadows and wounds and things like that that need working on and healing and loving and caring and evolving and shifting all that kind of thing but it's also seeing the gifts it's also seeing that the essence behind all that imprinting and conditioning and wounding, that's actually not who I am at my core. So that's it. It's, it's, it's like a different when I can separate them, then it's like, ah, I don't have to keep carrying it around. You start to separate yourself from it so you can start to let go you can't can start to create space to see it from a different way to have a different perception around it so it can shift and change so self-love means a state of appreciation for oneself that grows from actions that support our physical psychological and spiritual growth a state of appreciation for oneself that grows from actions that support our physical, psychological and spiritual growth. Self-love means having a high regard for your own well-being and happiness. Self-love means taking care of your own needs and not sacrificing your well-being to please others. Learning and loving who, why and how you are is your own responsibility. When finally you do appreciate all of who you are, you will easily discern and choose wisely on your path of maturing and evolving. We realize that it is our responsibility to fill up our own cup, to include ourselves in all the things and people we care about and be of service to. Appreciating that you sometimes do need to put yourself first. So, that is, so you have more energy, care and positive experiences to share and care. This is where you get why you put the oxygen mask on yourself first. Because if you can't breathe, <laughs> how are you going to help anyone? I don't do. And I, it's again, comes down to conditioning for the feminine to put themselves first. And so we struggle with that. So instead of trying to even include ourselves, we neglect ourselves. So I realized it's, well, how then do you still honor who you care about and just include yourself in that bundle? And you know your priorities shift and change every day. They're not always the same. So somewhere in that mix, you just include yourself. And that goes back to the first seed, self-reflection, 
self-awareness, self-acceptance, self-respect, self-trust. You've got, to, you've got to do this for yourself. You've got to take that time out to fill your cup up, to care about yourself, learn something new, go for a walk, oh, lots of things. It's just include yourself in your priorities. So on my website, there are um, links included in this to do your values test. Um, check out Medical Medium on Facebook or his website. He's got great information around food. The diabetichealthclinic.org has great meal recipes that are simple and really healthy and really tasty. LeeHarrisEnergy.com, there's a, a great course on boundaries. And Gaia, Gaia TV, if you're going to watch TV, really choose what you watch, hey? And Gaia TV is great. It's got lots of things that cover lots of really interesting topics where you just might learn something new or you just might find an interest. And there's lots of information on my website too that, that I'll probably be expanding on and yeah, expanding further on. That's, an, that's another, <laughs> that's another, um, another story, another story. So I just thought I'd check in from the garden. Let's have another look. There's the sun slowly and get the camera adjusting. And there's a chop in the background. All right, darlings. Have a beautiful night. Aho, amen, so might it be.